this is Zipporah Zions for Noble Desktop, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use the Roto Brush in Adobe After Effects. We'll be learning how to use the Roto Brush to easily separate elements from our footage. This allows you to apply individual effects to each piece or place objects underneath our rotoscope footage. Here's what our finished video is going to look like. You can see how this parrot is separated out from the rest of the footage here. Rotoscoping is a great technique for separating foreground elements from background elements. The Roto Brush is this cool tool in After Effects and near automates an otherwise tedious manual process. By uh, painting and adjusting with this brush, we can separate out our elements much faster and easier than if we would if we would do the old school frame by frame method. Um, we're going to be using just this one piece of uh, video footage over here and uh, this pre comp text animation I've made for you as well. So, uh, not, not much to sift through. And the project file will be available for download in the video description below. So, let's get started. First off, Let's drag and drop our footage into the empty timeline over here. Thank you. Uh, click on the footage layer in the layer stack over here. And if you have a Mac, you're going to hit uh, return and a PC like mine will hit enter. And we're going to name this, um, let's just call it Roto Brushed Parrot. There we go. Now double click on the footage to go inside the layer. This is where we're going to be doing most of our work with the rotor brush. Now, uh, here's something cool. Head up to Window, Workspace, uh, look for Paint. And the reason why we're going to be doing this is uh, because this is going to rearrange the interface to give us all the painting tools like brush sizes, a side-by-side -side comparison view over footage, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, and I could check it out. Now, we can simultaneously like work on our piece of footage and also see an update on the main comp over here. Um, so I'm actually going to shrink it a little bit so I get a bit more of my uh, layer footage over here. Great. Check out this little icon up here. You see it's uh, like a little person with a brush on it. So this is the Rota brush. So with our playhead uh, at the origin, right here at the start, we are going to uh, click on the Rota brush and now let's click and kind of like paint an outline, so to speak, around the parrot. Um, it really doesn't have to be exact, you know, just uh, it's all about getting getting it done at this stage. So as you can see, uh, the selection tool is pretty generous, so we're going to refine it. So uh, hold down uh, Alt on a PC, Command on a Mac, and you see how the broader brush turns red. We're actually going to slice up these chunks from the selection, uh, you know, bit by bit until we get more of an exact selection. All right. Once that's done, uh, take a look down here. You can see it's pretty small, but there's like a little, little green line over here. Um, and what this bar is, is that this defines how many frames the rotor brush is going to process. So we're going to want to constrain that amount so it's not to overwhelm the program. So grab the endpoint over here and drag it to the left, drag it to the left. We're going to put it at around three seconds. Yeah. Yeah, around three seconds. That's what we're going to do. Now we are going to refine our selection. So click and hold on the rotor brush tool up here. And this is refine edge. And it's really what it sounds like. It refines some edges. Uh, pretty useful for things like fur, hair, feathers, you know, fine organic edges. Um, and with that, I'm just going to click and drag and paint over some of the more uh, hairy edges, so to speak. All right, now we are going to be working with the effect controls. Now they um, should be docked in here. Uh, next to the composition, and we're at, uh, you know, composition window. We are going to actually grab and I want to pull them out so I can work with them a little more easily. So I'm going to grab this hamburger on docket. Uh, let's see, I will float you over here. I think that's all right. First thing that we're going to do, make sure that the version is set to 2.0. Um, and then we're going to be heading through these settings. Now, if uh, yours is not uh, toggle open, you know, toggle open rotor brush map. And let's be heading through our selections. So feather over here uh, refers to not the feathers on the bird, but, uh, you know, kind of how like soft and blurry you want your edges to be. So I'm going to put that at around nine. You know, your project might be a little different. This is what's going to work for mine personally. Contrast is uh, how much of a you know a hard edge do you want between the values of your selection and what's around it. Um, so it's going to make it a little more defined. Um, I'm going to put mine at around 75. Let's see. And then shift edge, really, again, what it sounds like, it moves the edges of your selection in and out. I'm going to try with negative 95 for this. All right. All right. We're getting there. Let's see what else. 
can see a little bit of a cleanup I'm going to do over here, but for the most part, this is what I want to see. All right, now we are going to hit spacebar or uh, whatever you have set for uh, preview on your machine. And we're going to have the, the program process our selection. Uh, give the program a minute to get through all those frames. And uh, you should note that the speed that the rotor brush runs at is entirely based on the computer setup, uh, RAM, processor, video card, you know, so on and so forth. All right, you can see that our parrot is now isolated from the background. So uh, what we're going to do, we're going to finish this up with some effects. So let's set up a background as well as some uh, cool transition effects next. So let's see, let's go over to our project window over here, grab another copy of the original footage. We're going to put it right underneath our uh, rotor brush parrot right here. And let's see, let's, you know, hit enter on a PC, return on a Mac, and we're going to call this background video. All right, let's have it line up a little more with our footage. There we go. All right, then. Next up is uh, the transition effects with blurring and grayscale. So we're going to head up to window effects and presets. Here it is. So mine pops into the left hand side over here. Uh, if yours appears different, you know, just dock it wherever you find most comfortable. All right, so we are going to be looking for Gaussian blur. Here we go. Just uh, let's see. Let's use this Gaussian blur, drag and drop it onto our background video footage. Nothing's going to happen just yet. And let's see, so the first thing that we're going to do with this one, we're going to be hitting um, the repeat edge pixels over here. This option here, you can see the whole sentence over there uh, to start with. And that's going to have the edge pixels of this blurred out effect um, also be included in the blurred out effect. But you'll see it when we get to that. Um, and then the next effect, let's see, let's head back to effects and presets. I'm actually going to pull this out and un I'm going to undock it and drag it over here so I could have access to multiple panels. Let's put in tritone. Drag that over to our background footage effect. Great, so we got two of these things. And the next thing that we're gonna be doing is click that brown box over there, drag it over to the gray, because we don't want this to have a sepia tone, we want it to really just have more of a, a grayscale look. And then we're gonna key, uh, we're gonna keyframe this thing. Now, with your playhead at the origin, hit the stopwatches next to blend with original and blurriness. All right, and then blend with original should be set all the way to 100%. So basically, we're not really seeing any effect just yet. So the next thing, we're going to grab our playhead, get it to be like one second in about-ish, you know. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to change blurriness to 20, blend with original to zero. And once the machine catches up, we're going to be seeing those effects. All right. And then finally, go over to project panel, grab this text pre-comp over here, uh, drag and drop it in between those layers. So it's a bit of a sandwich. And as you can see, now the uh, rotoscope parrot is hovering above the uh, animation right below it. And it retains its own color, its own, you know, uh, on values while the other effects go on all around it. So let's preview that. All right, as you can see, when I scroll through the uh, playback, uh, you can see that the parrot is moving, the background's moving, and the text is moving, but they are all uh, segmented and separate from each other with different effects applied to each one. Uh, now we're all done. Um, so as you can see, rotoscoping is really cool. The technique can be used not only on video footage, but on uh, still images as well. It can be repeated on a single piece of uh, moving video as well to separate multiple elements from the background. And all sorts of different effects can be applied individually to each rotoscoped element. You can try combining text, totally different uh, footage or video, or still images to the back or foreground of any future rotoscope project. All right, that's all for this tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed learning how to use a rotor brush in Adobe After Effects. This has been Sparzines from Mobile Desktop.